So hi guys, so welcome to my first video on limits. And this is really now our start to the calculus. We're just dipping our feet into the waters of differential calculus. So yeah, really exciting times ahead. So let's look at this concept of limit. You know, we've seen the word uh, almost every single day. Um, what does it mean mathematically? So let's take a closer look. Yeah, so as I said, we've seen this many, many times over. We look at speed limits, we look at the limit of uh, our ability to do things, our energy, uh, uh, muscle power, and all sorts of things. Also, if you have a look here, I mean, what has this got to do with limits? Well, you know, getting a ball into a hole while playing golf, it requires you to estimate uh, the limit of the force that you're going to basically induce on that ball uh, so that it actually gets into the hole. But it depends on a whole lot of circumstances as well as what we call variables. So yeah, so we see limits in everyday life, in sport, uh, could be in the kitchen, <laughs> could be in the maths lecture theater as well. So absolutely important for us. Again, if you look here, you know, people look at weight loss. I don't know why they speak of weight loss when it should be mass loss. So we have a whole scale of limits and uh, absolutely important to our well-being and health as well. So if you look at, for instance, obesity, what does one mean when one is overweight? So there's a scale. Um, once you go beyond that scale, then you go into obviously the next category of masses. Another very interesting one here is a balloon, you know. We cannot basically inflate a balloon um, infinitely. It's got to take a maximum limit uh, before it starts to explode because the pressure just reaches uh, a maximum value. So as we see, and you can imagine in engineering, in physics, in astrophysics, in cosmology, the limits to certain quantities are so important to maybe the survival of a system. All right. So Keep in mind that when we study mathematics, it's not just to write an exam or test, but mathematics is the language of reality. So whatever we learn right now, we could see the implications, the applications all around us. All right, now having just spoke about limits in a very general and crude sense, have a look at this uh, as a definition of a limit. It says that suppose that a function f of x is defined for all values of x near a, where a is just a number, but not necessarily at a. We'll get to that point just now. If as x approaches a without actually attaining the value a, f of x approaches the number l, then we say that L is the limit of f of x as x approaches a. And then we can write in a very compact form, the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to L. Now, if you look at this here, you know, at face value, most people get confused. What, what, what is really being said here? What is this a that we talk about? What do we mean about the function um, approaching this limit L. And the best way of understanding it is by a picture. All right, so let's take a closer look, not a complicated picture, something very simple. So what I look at is f of x. We're familiar with a function f of x, but I want to take a closer look at what we mean by x approaches a, and as x approaches a, then the limit f of x is L. So I want to quantify that in the next picture. Okay, guys, so we have a look at this picture. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's got a graph of y equal to x. So I'm just going to write down y equal to x, which is really nothing more than f of x equals to x. Agreed? So this is the y-axis. That's my origin. And there's the x-axis over here. So let's take a closer look at this. And I want to understand what we mean by x approaching a. In this case, you know, x approaching a... And I mentioned to you earlier that a is just a number. So let's look at this graph as x approaches, say, a simple number, 1. Okay? And I tediously put up this here. So if I have a look here, that's x equal to 1. Down here, agreed. Now, if x is 1, so straight away from my function here, f of 1 is 1. 
So it tells me the y value is 1. And there we go here. It almost seems childish, but I thought it's worth a while to have a look at this very closely. Now, what do we mean by x approaching 1? Well, let's start at x equal to a half. Okay, there we go. So this is x equal to a half. Obviously, its y value is going to be a half over there, 0 0.5. Let's creep up closer to 1. Let's take another value. Um, this looks like x as being 0, 0,8. The y value, no prizes for guessing, is 0, 0,8. Notice what we're doing. We are creeping up towards 1. Not actually getting to 1 at the point 1, but getting close enough. So the next one, just out of fun, we're going to go there. Whoa, this is like 0.99. So if x is 0.99, then the y value is 0.99. Okay, so notice as we get closer and closer to 1 on the x-axis, we're getting closer and closer to some limiting value on the y-axis. Now you look at this and say, hey, but hang on, why are we approaching from the left of 1? Surely we can also approach from the right of 1. Correct, excellent observation. So if you look here, this looks like what? 1.2, okay, that's 1, so this is about 1.2. If approach from the right x equal to 1.2, then the y value on the top there would be 1.2. But let's bring it in. Let's bring it in. As I said, let's approach uh, x equal to 1 from the right of 1. So if we get closer and closer, look at that yellow line there. That is basically sitting at 1.01. .01. That's the x value. 1.01. .01. What do you think the y value is going to be? <laughs> It has to be 1, 0, 1. So y is equal to x. So 1, 0, 1. So you notice very interestingly here that as x approaches 1, my function f of x approaches 1. If you have a look here. All right. So while we're playing around here to the left of 1, to the right of 1, but notice what we're doing here. We're adjusting and we're approaching a common limit on the top and for this case as x approaches 1 the function f of x approaches 1 so we write and hopefully you agree with me the limit of f of x which is this guy as x approaches 1 is equal to what not l but in our case is going to be 1 which is that y value i just hope that this is clear. I think this is beautiful as well. It's a lovely illustration. So pause, play it back, have a look, understand before you move on. Now it doesn't just have to be for straight lines. I mean these are functions, any function. So let's look at y equals to f of x. And in this case f of x equal to x squared. But we're just looking for positive values of x. Right? Because f of x equal to x squared is a happy face parabola remember but yeah, I'm just looking at the positive values of x so we're going to go like this again let's look at say x equal to 2 if you look at x equal to 2 and you know the y value there was going to be what 2 is going to be 4 because it's 2 squared it's going to be 4 so you notice that very carefully if I'm going from the right sorry from the left of 2 let's say I take a value like uh, 1 1 is somewhere here so x equal to 1, but it's too far off. 1 squared is going to be 1. But as I approach, as I approach going that way, you'll notice that this, let's look at something like 1.9. So this is 1,9. So that value there becomes 1,9. Now take a calculator and look at 1,9 squared. You'll notice that it's getting closer and closer to 4. The same thing happens on the right of 2. If you look at the right of 2, Let's say 2.1. That value is 2.1. In your calculator, you're going to have a look at 2.1 squared. You'll notice that it approaches 4. So we say that the limit of x squared as x approaches 2 is equal to 4. But clearly, this is very, very important. You notice that you know, in the definition of the limit, the definition was the limit of f of x, which is the function, as x approaches a, which is in our case the 2 there, 
and that's equal to L, where L is 4, which is the Y value, the output. Okay, so the function doesn't have to actually, we don't have to, we've never spoken about X equal to 2. We said as X approaches 2, but more importantly, I want you to focus on it. We can approach from the left of 2 and from the right of 2, which basically means if this is A, some number, I can approach from the left, I can also approach from the right. Now watch, mathematicians have a cute way of writing this. Approaching from the left, <laughs> too much. So we write, we approach from the left of A as A minus. Not minus A, A minus means from the left of A. If you look at A plus, we are approaching A from the right. How cute is that? From the left, A minus. From the right, A plus. I'm not saying plus A, I'm not saying minus A. A minus, left, A plus, right. Keep that in mind. Hold that thought. Okay, so let's just have a look at this very carefully over here. So we're going to go Y, we're going to go X. That's the origin. And then let's just take a function. and let's, So some function, uh, going to be F of X. And let's just keep that quite general. And then we're going to take this A there right so now you notice that if we are approaching a from the uh, left not getting to a think of a as a big hole in there or something so we can't really get into a like a black hole so we, we can get close enough to the edge but we don't want to get in there just yet so if we approach a then you notice that the function f of x if it is defined at a then just generally this value would be f of a right over here okay now we said we're not going to get to a but the closer we get to a the closer we get to either from the left or the right then our limit approaches f of a which is l so we say the limit now watch this the limit f of x as x approaches just watch that from the left of a is equal to l and then we got the limit f of x as x approaches a from the right is l then we can conclude if the left and right limits these are called one-sided limits if that is true then the limit of f of x as x approaches a is l. Notice, I don't care if f of a is defined or not. But if we approach sufficiently close to the hole, the black hole, getting to the edge, and if that function approaches a limit L from the left and a limit L from the right, the same value, then we say that the limit of the function as X approaches A exists and its limit is L. I don't care what happens at X equal to A. I'm emphasizing that, you know, when you read textbooks, they don't, they don't tell you that you can feel the emotion in my voice and I want you to understand that so even if f of a doesn't exist but if we get sufficiently close to a and we get that common number output l from left and right then the function f of x as x approaches a that limit is l smooth okay so this is a really kiff if I can use the word kiff uh, a plot or function and it really illustrates what we mean by the limit of a function so I'm just going to put in some values over here 0 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 now there's a function f of x which is really uh, a piecewise piecewise function so it's really you know it's uh, split up into 
several just jointed parts you can have a look here but it is a function nevertheless which is given by this orange curve that you see there and we're going to call that f of x but what i want to look at is the limit at several junctures um, junctures such a word or junction well anyway let's look at the limit of f of x watch this guys of f of x as x approaches one what is that now i told you we're going to focus on the left hand limit and the right hand limit so rather than go limit f of x as x approaches one i would suggest let's look at the limit let me write this out here the limit of f of x as x approaches not minus one one minus means approaching from the left of one and as we get there closer and closer and closer we notice the function is getting closer and closer to zero agreed so the limit there is zero now let's look at it from the right hand side one plus if you're approaching from the right hand side of one there we go here we notice the function approaches the value of one so you tell me does the limit as x approaches one exist here 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 does it no does not exist because they're approaching two different values to the left of one it's approaching zero to the right of one it's approaching one <laughs> so it doesn't satisfy the condition for the existence of the limit let's look at the limit of the function f of x as x approaches now two let's say from the left if it's approaching two from the left which is two minus which means we here going that way as we get closer and closer to two notice this function although it's not defined at x equal to one we don't care what sorry two we don't care what happens at two but close to two the function approaches a value of one if you look at the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the right there very close to 2 like 2.1 2.01 getting closer and closer although it's not defined at 2 but we notice that the functions get closer and closer to what value yeah 1 oops so it, therefore the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is one and it does exist please check that out let's look at three the limit f of x as x approaches three minus to the right of three if you look at to the right of three very close to that go 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 getting closer the function is actually has a limit the value is two if you look at the limit of f of x as x approaches three plus three plus doesn't mean plus three it means approaching three from the right of three and you can notice as you get closer and closer to three here the function approaches to there so therefore therefore the limit of f of x as x approaches three is two now here's a beauty think about this very carefully the limit of f of x as x approaches four <laughs> to the left you can see to the left as we approaches four the function the limit is one although the function is not defined at x equal to four look it's an open circle it's not defined at x equal to four but as we approach four very close to four to the left of four it's approaching one what happens to this function as x approaches four from the right <laughs> there is no right the function actually stops here the domain stops there hence we can't move the function is not defined for x greater than four so hence the limit as x approaches four does not exist yes the left hand limit four minus exists the limit as x approaches four plus does not exist hence the limit of the function as x approaches 4 does not exist. I want you to play that over and over again. This is a beautiful problem. Excellent. Understand this? Bang! You know limits.
Okay, guys, this is a really, really cool problem. You know, you've got a f of x is a piecewise uh, function. You notice that it's not really smooth. There's jumps and discontinuities everywhere. It's really broken up and messy, but it's a really nice way of testing your understanding of limits. So block out these answers over here. Look at the function, write down the limits and say, for instance, minus two, you can see there, minus one. You can see something really interesting happening at two, for instance. To the left of 5, to the right of 5, what happens at 10 um, and 11. So all so very interesting stuff if you have a look here. What is the function doing there? And if I go to the left of 11, to the right of 11, is is the does the limit actually exist? And if it does, you should have an answer, or an explanation. If it doesn't, you should also have an explanation. So please have a look at this stuff and make sure you understand it. And I get a good feeling that if you do understand this, because this graph incorporates just, you know, functions involving infinities, functions that diverge, limits don't exist. And then you also have what we call finite limits. So uh, this was a quick excursion into limits. And in my next couple of videos, I will be looking at specific examples. So hope you enjoyed this one. See you on the other side of the asymptote. Whatever that means.